When I hit that 182 and a half kilo uh, front squat PR, the, the best squat I've, I've had in the, in the front squat, uh, that was in a period where I was really, really hammering the posterior chain. I was not doing as much volume I am doing now for the front squat, funnily enough. What I was focusing mostly on was, was the posterior chain. You know, uh, this is like in a block pull, rack pull, deficit pull, uh, back raiser, GHD back raises, like that, that was kind of the, the phase that I was in. And as I was kind of accumulating volume, doing all of those movements, I started noticing that my, my positioning in the front squat started getting better and better. I started feeling stronger and stronger in that position. Um, I think I was sprinkling in quad work as well within the squats around that kind of towards getting close to that day where I hit the 182 and a half. Uh, but the comfort, the comfort in the front squat came from the back. Uh, today I thought I wanted to get back to the whole deadlifting. You know, my deadlifting now is so infrequent. I'm focused solely on putting volume into the into the front squats, uh, doing triples, doing daily, you know, working up to a daily single of, of max or whatever the day is offering. Uh, and uh, I'm kind of accumulating quite a lot of volume in that. Uh, so it's a completely different approach that I used last time when I was doing front squats. Well, when I was last time working up to that PR. Last time was all about the back and I felt comfortable. Uh, now, everyone's leverages are different. Everyone's going to have a different type of puzzle to solve. But for me, when I when I unrack that bar and when I walk that thing out, it tells me exactly if I'm going to be successful lifting this thing or not. And the body works in kind of mysterious ways like that. You know, it tells us what the quads have got in us before we even start to engage the quads. But for me, it's the upper back. So if I, on the way down to the front squat, if I can maintain thoracic extension, if I can maintain on the eccentric, I feel that I'm able to overcome it in the concentric, as funny as that sounds. Um, most of the time, now I'm kind of thinking to myself, most of the time, I fell front squats in the hole. So I lowered the thing down to a varying you know, speed. If I... If it just pins me straight to the ground, I'm not getting up, right? And as soon as I start to engage, I lean over and the bar drops and that's, that's the end of my front squat. So it's that leaning over thing, you know, that really gets me. In the, in the back squat, though, I get out of the hole and I get to some sort of like halfway portion and that's when I fail. So the front squat is a different failing spot. So when I can resist that thoracic flexion, lumbar flexion, and I can get out of the hole while the quads are pushing and I can maintain that rigidity through my back, I've got a chance to finish that lift. So last time I was doing lots and lots and lots of back work. This time I'm not doing any back work. So vastly different approaches. And I'm kind of getting in the same kind of vicinity of hitting a PR again. I've, I've hit 180 in training now a few times and I feel like it's close. I just need to wait for a good day. Today was not a good day. I wasn't feeling strong at all. I uh, felt like the weights were freaking stable to the floor, but I tried to to, to do some deadlifts. Uh, I did some uh, conventional deadlift, deadlifts with my stiff bar. I got up to 220. That felt horrible. So then I put it up on some um, boxes or whatever you want to call it. I did some uh, block pulls, kind of mid-shin level. Uh, I did a few uh, kind of sets of that. I worked up to the same weight I did off the floor, but I did triples with it off the blocks. Um, and that kind of spent me, went over to the front squats, worked up to 160 and today was kind of horrible. I, I ended up spending like two hours uh, in the garage. I was moving things around. I was looking at the car, checking over this, that, the other. Like, uh, you know, I was home alone. So I just went and played basically. Uh, but as I was kind of playing and messing around in between these sets, I, I went into the log and I started reading the log. And uh, basically, I had a really nice day. Yeah, you know, the training didn't go as planned, but I had a good day because I was in the thought um, of training, looking at the training journal, looking at all these sorts of things. And it occurred to me, wow, man, the approach last time was completely different. It was all back. You know, hardly any freaking volume in the, in the squat. But here I am smashing out. Um, lots and lots of front squats, which I always say it hits the posterior chain, not the posterior chain, like the, the, the glutes and hamstring type of thing. Posterior chain in the sense of it hits the upper back, man, like th the traps, the upper erectors, it really hits that. So, and it's kind of cheaper 
you know, I want to say it's really, really cheap on recovery because front squats, I'm dealing with freaking 100 kilos, 110 kilos working weight. Whereas where I'm doing rack pulls and block pulls, I'm doing 240, 260. It's freaking heavy ass work, man. Like it's really wiping me out. But similar type of carryover to the front squat uh, in the sense that both allow me to develop that strength in the thoracic extension, um, which is unlike anything else. Like, you know, uh, um, it's like anything else. Like you could do your rows. I've tried rowing, you know, rowing did not bring me to feeling more comfortable in the following days in the front squat. It wasn't anything like that. Uh, it's, it's the bending over or resisting the bending over. That's kind of, uh, what the, the motto is here. So my, my, my deadlifts feel horrible. And I think that's partly because my mid, uh, uh back is fried from all the volume that I've done in previous days. So, you know, the deadlift and the front squat volumes, let's call them, both are competing for the same muscles, for the same recovery. And so when you do both of them heavy, they cancel each other out. And that's kind of what I felt today. Um, so I, I can't wait for the, uh, for the safety squat bar uh, to happen finally. I've been doing a lot of research about that and I finally worked out that the only bar that I can get which is out of stock here locally in the local uh, distributor here, is the, the REP uh, safety squat bar. The company is called REP, R-E-P. I don't know what it stands for. It's a REP. Um, the only bar really that's going to fit my rack. Apparently, my rack is 1,200 millimeters wide from post to post. And so all these other bars, you know, Rogue and all these other bars that are around the place, Australian manufacturers, which some of you guys kindly mentioned and, and opened my eyes to like i haven't bought anything in a while we have some local uh, pretty good manufacturers here but all of those bars are around 46 or 47 inches to the camber point of the, of the safety squat bar which is not going to fit in my rack and which is probably the same issue they had in that gym that i went to so rep is the is the company that makes the uh the barbell i think it's from from colorado actually <laughs> my fairy NBA team, Denver. Uh, so they're from over there and they make a camber to camber, which, which is I think 49 inches, 49 inches, which works out to be 12, I want to say 1270 mil, uh, which is going to clear my rack. So I can't wait to get that because that's further going to, you know, in, in another angle, let's say in another way, it's going to further train that whole upper thoracic uh, thoracic extension while also giving me some nicer leverages to push with the quad. So uh, I'm kind of looking forward to that, uh, to kind of throw into the mix. Right now, I'm kind of wondering whether I should be incorporating some sort of pulling as well, although I'm very hesitant to it. Like tomorrow, I'll be putting in the 15 triples with 60% front squats again. Uh, and so it's probably going to be affected by what I did today. You know, it's probably going to be affected. So this is where you start to kind of get into trouble. When you start, you know, flirting with different ideas, different methods of getting to the same goal. Like you can't, you don't have unlimited resources. You really need to make a decision on how you're going to go about things. Um, this block has been all about front squats, front squats, front squats. And I love what they're doing. They're really transforming my upper trap. Uh, I feel like I'm fuller there. I'm fully in my mid back. Uh, it's it's an awesome uh, feeling. I, I, I look better. I don't know. I look thicker. I look better. It's all from front squats. Um, so, I don't know. I'll try and incorporate the safety squat bar. That's definitely... Uh, the deadlifting, it's very, very infrequent right now. Any sort of uh, hip hinging is very, very infrequent right now. Um, but, you know, that's where I'm in. That's where I'm at at the moment. Uh, you guys will also notice that today I've, I've kind of changed the, 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 the layout of my home gym. I like to do this every once in a while just to mix it up a little bit. Um, I've said this in the past, but the whole freaking floor in my garage is whack. It's all wavy. It's all uneven. And the way, the, the area that I put the, the front squat, the, the, the squat stands today, once again, my left side was lower than the right. So the bar was kind of like leaning towards that. It was really off-putting and really didn't like it. So tomorrow I'm going to put it somewhere else. Maybe it shifted a few inches this way, that way. I don't know. I'll work something out. Uh, but the, the whole uh, idea behind that is that I wanted the profile look. Uh, when I, you know, today was a particularly bad mobility day because I also did deadlifts and I had trouble staying upright. 
But whenever I watch myself squat from the side, it looks horrible to me. It looks horrible because the bar is not over my midfoot and it's kind of always towards the toes. And, you know, you don't need to be a freaking Einstein of physics to work out that that's not optimal. It's not optimal, you know, one with the bar, you're kind of chasing the bar. The bar is really taxing you more than it should be taxing you. And so is it a mobility problem? Is it a strength problem? Is it a weakness of a certain part of the body? All those thoughts can't come in and kind of dominate my thoughts. Um, especially, you know, I did this on a, on a day that I wasn't feeling good. So maybe tomorrow I'm going to feel a little bit better about it. But, you know, the, the, the profile look tells a lot about the status of my lifting. So if, the, if that empty bar front squats look that bad... Uh, where I have to really, really turn my feet out to get some sort of ver ver verticality, it's probably not going to be a successful uh, a day in the gym. Uh, it's just the way it is. You know, whatever the structures are that are making me take these positions, you know, a lot of you guys think that the leaning over in the squat is purely because your 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 quads are weak. Well, what's happening when the bar is empty? What's, what's happening when the bar is empty? Why am I leaning over with the bar is empty? The quads have nothing to do. Like there's no weight on the bar. There's no requirement. There's no fight. So why am I assuming that position even in there? So, you know, you start to kind of think to yourself, maybe that position is not because of a weakness. Um, mobility issue. Is it a mobility issue? Is it the ankles? Is it the hips? Is it the back? You know, I had similar type of issues in the, in the bottom of the deadlift today. I could not lock in my, uh, I felt really, really weak in that really bent over kind of hip flex position. I couldn't generate any power. So probably overworked, uh, not feeling good uh, because the, the positioning was kind of like awfully similar in, in terms of how, how strong I was feeling in several different movements. I felt weak in the block pull, felt weak in the deadlift, felt weak in the front squat. So anytime I was getting into that deep hip flexion position, I was feeling really weak and I was leaning over. So anyway, you guys know me, man. Like I always think about this stuff more than I should be thinking about. But it just occurred to me today that let's do a, a pull. You know, I haven't done a pull for a little while. Let's do a pull. Look at the log and I'm like, wow, I did a lot of little pulling leading up to that 180 and a half. Um, which tells me that the stronger my back is, the better front squatter I am. It sounds whack as well. But that's kind of how it went last time and that's probably how it's going to be in the future as well. It's just front squatting for me wrecks me upper back, wrecks my upper back. It really, really taxes me. A lot of you guys have messaged me and like, how the hell can you front squat that much body, that much weight? Some of you guys can, you know, do low bar squats and whatnot and you're like, what am I missing? What am I missing that I can't front squat? Like some of you guys have really, really like better front squats, be better back squats than me, but you can't front squat. And I always go back to thoracic extension. It has to be thoracic extension. The legs are strong enough to push. It's the thoracic extension. You're collapsing your back. Um, that's how I feel. Now, a lot of you guys are like, what, what if you're like perfectly vertical? It's, it just becomes a quad exercise. You can't do that. You can't just be like, it's not a hack squat, man. It's not a hack squat. As much as you think it is, it's not. There's pressure on your collarbone and that's shifting everything down. Um, so, it's tricky to think about and I often go crazy thinking about it. You know, what's a good morning squat? What's a failed front squat? Is it the same pattern? Is it the same weakness? You go crazy. But anyway, I, I know what works. I can go back into my journal. And this is the beautiful of, of having a journal. You go back into your journal and you're like, okay, I did this. I hit a PR. I did this. I didn't hit a PR. Okay, so you know, there, there's some similarities there. We can pick this apart. And that's what I do with a lot of these things, man. I just pick things apart and I'm like, okay, this was a successful period because I did this. And you kind of try to make you know sense of it all. Common denominators are these. And this is how I got to these uh, positions. And so... For me, back, 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 back. Um, and lots of volume in the squatting motion. Very light volume to keep the hips happy. And voila. Uh, voila. <laughs> lots of volume in the squatting motion to keep the hips happy. And strong, strong hip hinging. Strong upper back. And Ivan's the strongest he can possibly be. Appreciate you guys. And uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.